pillar of garbage is trying to say that Star Wars has a racism problem but doesn't discover or define it, outside of four DMs sent to an actress on Instagram. Instead, he looks at a Reddit post which got him all hot and bothered, making a mountain out of a molehill. So, let's see what the big deal is. I'm going to exhaustively break down this post, what it's saying, what it's insinuating, and how it works on multiple levels to spread hate and bigotry. The image post in question has a quote from Moses and multiple photos disproving her claim. It's not really saying anything, it's not insinuating anything, and it's not spreading hate and bigotry on any level. They're pictures. It's simply showing that Moses is wrong. Person on left says something, images on right disprove their claim. That's it. You can invent all the nonsense you want around that in your head, but your eyes don't lie. This is referred to as the defense mechanism called projection. Pog has to wrap himself up in his security blanket because reality is not what it looks like to him, so he has to change that perception. It, it must be different. Yes, they must be racist. They must be bigots for making a collage and screen caps showing with basic evidence and proving that a woman, a black woman at all, at all made, a, made a statement that is obviously wrong. And either way, it's really not a great sign that the collage of significant non-white figures in the galaxy far, far away had to puff up its numbers with a recast, a minor character from one episode of The Mandalorian, and, oh yeah, again, a Tuscan. Why, a Tuscan is an alien, you know, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. The concepts of human discrimination based off race is kind of irrelevant when you have dozens of aliens and various kinds of artificial intelligence in a space opera that spans a galaxy. I'm sorry, did I say dozens? I meant 20 million. So Pog accuses episode four of being too white because there's no black actors based on the collage and hilariously forgets to mention James Earl Jones, the voice actor of Darth Vader. Yes, he was a actor. He's part of the cast. Yes, he is a black man. But is Moses talking about representation or black people just getting a paycheck? What's the scope of her diversity exactly? You'd have to admit that having only this many non-white characters in a then 30-year-old franchise, two of whom barely got to do anything, is kind of fucking sus. It's as if the writers, like George Lucas, don't care about race. Is George the racist or are you? The creators are busy coming up with new aliens and robots and spaceships and cool fun scenarios. Not your boring racist ideology invented diversity ratio or whatever magical pot of gold that exists at the end of the LGBTQ rainbow. It's as if there's more to deal with than, hey, we need some black dudes because a bunch of ideologues in the future want more black dudes because Star Wars is racist. Bob Iger in 2016, the CEO of Disney at the time, said to The Hollywood Reporter, Rogue One has one of the greatest, most diverse casts of any film we have ever made. We are very proud of that, and that is not a political statement at all. Maybe your irreverent ideology should stop looking at big sci-fi franchises. Maybe go bug the Malcolm X fans or the Just Mercy fans. You'll have plenty of discussions on how many black people they should or shouldn't cast in those films or whatever race ratio is appropriate. You know, because they actually deal with racial issues? Oh, and because they're on Earth. At the end of the day, white and non-white are both made up categories anyway. So if they're made up categories, why are you so concerned about them? Do you like punching holes in your own argument? Is this video a joke? Is your ideology a joke? Oh yeah, at literally any point in the process, even during the Disney era, the non-white characters are dwarfed by the white ones. Now that's interesting because humans in Star Wars are dwarfed by every other species in the galaxy because it's Star Wars. Now, are you making a writing casting argument in London, England? Either way, the UK is mostly white and has been for a while, and writers can write any characters they want, but here's the main question... Why should there be more black characters in Star Wars? To be perfectly clear, the point I'm trying to make with such comparisons isn't that Star Wars is bad because there are more white characters. No, I'm simply making these comparisons to throw the idiocy and bigotry of this post into sharp relief. Okay, where is the bigotry and idiocy of this post? When all it is, is screen caps of non-white actors. 
Why do you hate this post so much? Does it break your sad little ideology into pieces? If anything, it's showing us that Moses is wrong. Congrats. Star Wars is diverse. It's always been that way. You got what you wanted, in case you haven't figured that out for the past 40 or so years. Now, if anything, it's showcasing your bigotry and your idiocy because you got so riled up over it. Normally, I'd just downvote this and keep scrolling, but this really got under my skin, to the point that I've put on hold the video I was meant to be working on today. Because I'm sick of seeing posts like this and just moving on, taking their existence for granted. Which is sad, because we know Pog is smarter than this. If she had, she would see that across 11 films, 14 characters aren't white. You can belittle the collage all you want, but don't lie to us. It's 19. And that's a straw man implying she actually saw this collage. If she was so concerned about black actors in Star Wars before opening her mouth on how diverse Obi-Wan would be, she'd do some basic research. A quick Google search would give her something like this. Every black Star Wars actor is ranked from worst to best from the Geek Twins. Or, I don't know, look at other films she's never heard of, because it's blatantly obvious she doesn't know what she's talking about. No, 14 non-white faces across 40 plus years of cinema tells us that diversity has been achieved. This is obviously a facile oversimplification of what people actually mean when they talk about diversity in good faith, and indeed resembles fairly closely in mental acuity the answer you'd get were you to ask a lump of wet pizza dough what it thought about diversity in Star Wars. Ah, uh, you know you've done something wrong when someone says you're not arguing in good faith. Somehow this poster is lying, obfuscating something. I mean, it's true. There's actually more than 19. Here's a post that has 26. Oh my God, 26 black Star Wars actors. What? Maybe there's more than 26. Oh, he's not arguing in good faith either. This one is seven. I guess, I guess they're also in bad faith, huh? Seven is smaller than 26. Oh, geez, are horrible people lying to us like that. Such bad faith people of, a, of an argument. We, we must be a member of the alt. They are members of the alt-right. Did the poster forget their addition table? Doesn't he know Jar Jar and Maz were orange? but there's actually a more sinister dynamic going on here. Yes, the sinister dynamic of collages. Dynamic going on here, beyond mere stupidity. So the collage maker was dumb. I mean, I use Photoshop, I make collages. Pog is now attacking the idea of evidence-based collages. Okay, Chief, tell us why 20 screen caps are stupid. Let's go back to that title. Has Moses Ingram not seen the films? So Pog then goes into a whole tirade about the logic and probability of this person having watched the films or not, like he's a mind reader. It's complete speculation and worthless. It doesn't matter if she's watched all the films and is lying about it or pushing an agenda or she's forgetful. It doesn't really matter if she's not watched them all and just wants more black actors or more work. It doesn't matter. She's just wrong. The post proves she's wrong because evidence speaks for itself. But Pog attacks those who agree with the post, the, uh, the post itself, the, uh, the poster saying it's stupid, bigoted, and idiotic without providing any evidence. It's just his opinion. He says, oh, it's, it's stupid. It just is. All he had to do was attack the content of the collage. Like, is, is person A, person of color? Yes or no? Is person B? And then we could have a discussion. We could say, oh, yeah, well, she's you know partially right or she's completely wrong. No, no, no. She's completely wrong. But he didn't even bother to investigate that. Even though the title is The Investigation of Racism in Star Wars from a Reddit post or some nonsense. The evidence speaks for itself. We don't care about her potential encyclopedic knowledge of Star Wars. I don't even have that. Pog doesn't have that. The poster doesn't have that. As we saw, he's off by about you know 16 or 17 or so black actors in Star Wars. You know, we don't care about her mental state or her memory skills or if she's lying or she has an agenda or, or just wants more work for black people. She's wrong. And you can't disprove that. Now, Pog, on this case, 
is the one who's lying, or let's not say lying, let's say he has a bad faith arguer. He's inventing a narrative in some weird defensive way. Like he's gone off the beaten path and say, look at this thing over here. He's the one projecting. He's the one trying to defend a person who has said a series of ignorant and false statements. And since in real life she obviously has seen the films. One, how do you know that? And two, even if she did, did she start counting black actors while she was? I highly doubt it. Notice how Pog doesn't give any evidence to prove that Moses did, in fact, see the films. And by films, Pog implies all of them. Not just one, but films plural, meaning all, which is 12. I didn't know actors had to do that. In fact, I'm quite sure they don't. They just need to show up and say their lines. Maybe Pog is assuming the best, that Moses is a good little actress, and before she went to work on her first day, she went and watched all his Star Wars films. I think that's what he's implying. Either way, we know that Pog is lying because he has provided no evidence to show that she has watched any Star Wars movies. The idea that Ingram's lying about the diversity of Star Wars deliberately. Only one major motivation this post can be evoking. The woke, woke agenda. agenda. Which we know exists. So, you're saying Moses is indeed lying because Disney has a woke agenda. Why can't it simply be she wants more black people in movies? Isn't that easier and simpler to believe? If I was a black actor, I'd want more fame and fortune. I mean, why not? I don't want to spend too much time on this section because A, the woke agenda doesn't exist, and B, the woke agenda doesn't exist. Okay, so Moses is lying, but it's not because of the woke agenda. Okay. And yes, the woke agenda does exist at Disney, as various video evidence discovered by Christopher Rufo has showed us, of Disney executives like Latoya Raveno wanting to insert LGBT content and getting her way of doing so. There's the entertainment head, Carrie Burke, wanting to ramp up queer visibility within the Magic Kingdom. Then there's the diversity and inclusion manager, yes, that's the title, Vivian Ware, who removed gendered pronouns with scripts for cast members at certain theme parks. There's a bunch of other evidence, but a simple Google search will provide much more. But even if the fascist dog whistling isn't intentional, the Dude, it's a collage. You're reaching. When did fascism get involved? And when did they start dog whistling anything? I thought it was a guess or an assumption that there was a dog whistling toward the woke agenda? Now there's a fascist dog. Is Disney the fascist? Is the poster? Is the audience making? Like, who's doing the dog whistle? Like, what is going on? Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Wait till I get going! Let's dismantle this meme and its twisted faux logic once and for all. It's not a meme, it's a collage. It's not really about logic, it's about evidence. It has proven her wrong. All Pog has is the belief that she's lying. Therefore, the collage is wrong somehow, so the black starlet is lying. Uh, okay. How does that make her look good at all? No reasonable person would see these words and assume Ingram actually believed that no person of colour had ever existed in Star Wars. She's clearly speaking hyperbolically. Hyperbole is a form of figurative speech and the use of obvious and deliberate exaggeration, which means we don't take such words or phrases literally as the actions and the statements are next to if not completely impossible. They're used for a strong impression and to add emphasis. For example, I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. No, I can't actually eat a horse. I died of embarrassment. No, you're still alive. It's raining cats and dogs. No, this is going to take forever. Don't worry, it won't. If you go through the entire article, the only thing remotely figurative is her quoting MLK, which is a quote. Pull yourself up from your bootstraps. Now that's an idiom and not her own words. There's no exaggeration, there's no emphasis, nor is she using figurative language like an idiom or providing any real or strong impressions. That's how hyperbole works. You can point out the impossible exaggerated phrase or words used. Now, you can read the article yourself in the link if you don't believe me. In the same paragraph, the interviewer states she is clever 
quietly confident and pragmatic in her answers. Now, being clever can lend itself to using comedy and exaggeration, but she never does so in the interview. And being confident and pragmatic lends itself to being matter-of-factly and down-to-earth, being clear and certain of yourself and your statements. I also don't see Moses coming across as having the demeanor of a Shakespearean actor, even though she has performed Shakespeare, or having the stature or vocabulary of a clever comedian, someone who's kidding around, being highly expressive with idioms, or in any way having a command of the subject material to use bombastic, flowery, or even romantic terms. If I was in her shoes, I'd be doing an interview saying what comes to mind. Whatever personality Pog is projecting onto her, well, I'm sorry, but I simply am not there. When you realize this, that the rhetoric of this shitty meme hinges on an utterly unreasonable interpretation of Ingram's words. A collage, not a meme, is a series of images. It is not rhetoric nor a rhetorical device. It is visual evidence directly proving that what Moses said was wrong. There are no words in the images to constitute rhetoric. She said, Obi-Wan is going to bring the most diversity I think we've ever seen in the galaxy before. That could be true. Who knows? Pog could have taken a subjective approach, meaning she thinks Obi-Wan is going to be more diverse than, let's say, Rogue One or Episode Nine, Because he didn't think long enough for his sad little interpretation of one starlet's bullshit because we need more blacks in Star Wars for some reason. There's no reason behind this. There's no logic behind this. It's just ideology. Blame others for thinking differently because they're fascists somehow. They're dog whistling about something. Notice he didn't say the title. He said meme because the title, well, there's only eight words there. He has little to work with in this post. But title or a title is also not rhetoric. The only shitty and un utterly unreasonable interpretation of Ingram's words are pogs. What you've done here is build what we call a house of cards. In order for any of Pog's nonsense to be true, one, she has to be lying. So she just lied during an interview for whatever reason. Yeah, that's a really good look. Two, that everything she said in the quotes in the post was hyperbolic, even though he doesn't know or can't point to the actual hyperbolic words. That she did watch one or all 12 of the Star Wars movies, has some encyclopedic knowledge of all the actors who are white or non-white or whatever. At the end of the day, white and non-white are both made up categories anyway. All because he's lying to himself. He has to white knight this person because more black people are better for Star Wars, even though he thinks white people in Star Wars wouldn't make it worse or something. Sounds like he's just playing to a crowd, getting angry and making shit up. It becomes extremely clear what's actually going on here. OP doesn't like the fact that Ingram isn't happy with Star Wars' historical lack of diversity. <laughs> First he could read the mind of Moses Ingram, now he could read the mind of anonymous poster online who said nothing. It's incredible. And wants to attack her, call into question her intelligence or her integrity. I'm quite sure a collage is not an attack, sir, nor is asking a question like, did you watch movies? You're inventing yet another narrative. It's, it's amazing. It's like he, his straw men have grown into like windmills now. The only emotional aggression is from Pog, and that's white netting the starlet as well, who's as ignorant of Star Wars as she appears to be. Now, that's not my opinion. That's not an attack. That's what happened when she opened her mouth and talked to the independent. She has revealed her agenda and her intelligence. It's clear. There's an amount of ingratitude being projected onto Ingram here. The only amount of gratitude being projected onto Ingram here is by Mr. Pillage of... Pillage of Garb. <laughs> so this is a big waste of time. Uh, this dude is playing to his base, fighting paper tigers and getting so angry that they could die. They might actually learn from my video of, you know, if they listened to it, which they didn't, to what actual hyperbole is. In case you weren't listening, it was in this paragraph. But here's Moses' actual knowledge of Star Wars, putting to bed Mr. Pillar of Garbage's opinions. It's sad because I found this in about a minute of searching, which if Pog wasn't so angry at 
evidence of Moses being an ignoramus and forgetful starlet, it would have stopped him from looking like an angry grifter, inventing a problem or a narrative that doesn't exist. Maybe he's running out of video ideas, I don't know. I could have started and ended with this evidence right here, because it's evidence. But you know, to some people, evidence just doesn't matter. These are two clips from an interview with Moses at this year's 2022 Star Wars celebration in Anaheim. The link is in the description. Now we've seen Inquisitors before in Star Wars Rebels and Jedi Fallen Order. Did you go back and watch any of those episodes as research? Uh, yeah. Well, I actually didn't. I actually, it, I felt like I had so much freedom to make Reva who she wanted to be, you know, being her in live action for the first time. I mainly just focused on the prequels. Oh, so she did watch the prequels, but apparently has no idea of episodes four to nine. So no idea who Lando or Finn is, Karga, Gideon, Val, Janna, and many others. But she could remember Windu and Captain Panaka, who had plenty of scenes of dialogue. Or she just forgot, because that's weird to start counting black faces in a movie series about the backstory of Darth Vader. Now, what was your experience with Star Wars prior to landing this role? I'll start with you, Moses. Um, so prior to this, I, I knew like Vader and I knew Obi-Wan and it's really hard to believe, but I had never seen the movies. And so it was really this experience that sort of opened up the door to Star Wars for me. And I actually prefer it this way because now it's attached to so many personal moments and memory celebration. You know what I mean? So it's something that I'll certainly remember forever. And for Oh, she never watched the prequel films until she got hired. Hmm, who saw that coming? She obviously has seen the films. I had never seen the movies. Obviously. Never seen the movies. Never seen the movies. I mainly just focused on the prequels. After being cast in March of 2021, filming began in May, which means she supposedly mainly focused on the prequels, which I guess means she watched them for two months. But that's not conclusive. And spent the entire year up till May of 2022 not watching anything to do with Star Wars, which means Pog's entire video is nothing more than speculation, projection, white knighting, hatred to others for simply liking a collage, and a series of inductive panderings. If only he spent a minute to type Moses Ingram's name into YouTube. Thank you for watching and have a good day. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me. It's not working out, maybe it's the chemistry. It's time to break up so I can make a better